Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at grammar exercise 1 from chapter 24 of the Road to Latin textbook. Now before we dive in, like I always tell you, if you want to see this um, grammar exercise or even this chapter from the textbook in more detail, feel free to take a look on my website. You can find a lot of extra stuff there that might help you um, just as you work through the textbook, things like vocab help, games, um, grammar notes, videos, whatever it might be. So I'd always encourage you that if you're working your way through uh, Road to Latin and you just want some extra help with it, feel free to check that out. Now, before we dive into it, um, every time we do a grammar exercise video, I always said there's a couple things you want to have done before you watch the explanation. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you've done is you've worked your way through the entire chapter. So you started with vocab, so you know what all the words mean, you feel comfortable with it. You've read through the grammar notes. That's really important. So use the Road to Latin textbook um, to get the grammar explanation. If you want more help, again, I've written out my notes on my website along with some videos to help you um, understand what's going on, right? Chapter 24 is still talking about third declension nouns. So there's a lot of stuff that will help you out. But one way or another, make sure you've got the vocab, make sure you have the grammar. And to practice the grammar before you even do the grammar exercises, <clears throat> it's always a good bet to read the story. So the story is set up so that you can see the grammar in context. And by reading and understanding the story, you are working your way through the grammar. So I'd always recommend that you do that first and then use these grammar exercises just as sort of a, a last check to make sure that you're on the right track. Um, I would say when, when you're learning Latin, I always tell my students, we're not learning Latin to do grammar exercises and just read random sentences. Um, that's not really what we're about. We're more about reading stories, right? And understanding the language. So this should kind of be the last thing you do just as a double check or triple check to make sure that you feel really good about the grammar before you move on from the chapter. But if you can get through this grammar exercise and it all makes sense, and then you check your answers against mine, you're feeling really good about it. That's always a sign that you're probably ready to move on. Um, you can kind of work your way into the next chapter, okay? And if you want more help, I always say um, Road to Latin does usually maybe uh, one or two grammar exercises. If you want to work on your translations, Magistrula is always the best. Um, you can always find a lot of practice there. And just keep doing as many um, grammar exercises as you want until you feel really, really comfortable, right? Sentences to translate. And if you want, again, you can find on my website um, a section where I've made them for you so you don't have to do anything. Just click the link and it'll open up um, Magistrula sentences for you to translate so you can work on this, okay? All that is a way to say that you want to do the prep work before we dive in. Um, but hopefully, if you haven't done that, right, uh, pause the video, go back and do it. But hopefully, if you're uh, you know moving forward with the rest of the video, you've already done all that, and you can double check your answers um, against mine to see how you did, okay? So grammar exercise one starts like this. Um, part one is just saying decline the Latin expressions for the following. So all of these words, you have are phrases rather. You have famous consul, good mother, great commander, weary legion, happy person, and old custom. They're all singular. If you wanted to, um, you could get a little rowdy and make them plural just to practice the rest. But they're really trying to see if you can understand third declension nouns again. So, you know, words like consul, for instance, um, is a third declension noun. So it's just about matching up the adjective. Um, remember, we used to uh, do case number and gender for that. And the, the trick here is that when you're using a first and second declension adjective, like famous is claros, right? Claros a um, when it's going with a third declension noun, the endings will not be spelled the same, but they're still going to match in case number and gender. So this is something that's really tricky for my students to um, kind of work their way through when they first see it, because you're expecting it to be spelled the same way. So when you see something like consul claros, for instance, that kind of throws them off because they're expecting, you know, to see a U.S. in both places doesn't have to be the key here is case number and gender. OK, so consul, again, being a third declension uh, masculine uh, noun, right, it's going to be just going through the singular if we're uh, going through the cases. You have consul, consulis, consuli, consulem and consulate, right? Blank is EMA or the endings we're using. So when you match that up with famous, which is claros a um, we're just using the masculine form. So you're going to get consul claros, consulis clari, consuli claro, consulum clarum and consule claro, right? So you're going us e o um o on the adjective side. Just match them up and you're good, right? That's how you would say famous consul um, in nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative forms, okay? The next one is good mother. And again, the same process. Mater is a third declension noun. It's feminine. You're using bonus a um, right? Um, for the adjective good. In this case, feminine matches with feminine. So you're going to get mater bona, matris bonae, matri bonae, matrem bonam, and matre bona. Okay, and that last bona will have a long mark over it. Okay, but you're just kind of going through the list of third declension um, you know, endings and matching up with your adjective. You should be fine. 
The third one you have here is great commander, right? So the word for commander that we're using is imperator. And great uh, is probably just magnus aum, right? So um, in this case, you'd have imperator magnus, imperatoris uh, magni, imperatori magno, imperatorem magnum, and imperatore magno, right? So you're just going blank is ema on the noun, right? Imperator. And then you're using the masculine um, form of magnus aum. So you can have magnus e o m o, right? Just match them up and you're good. On the next one, you have weary legion. So the word for legion is legio, right? <clears throat> legio legionis, which is a feminine noun. So you just go to the word for tired or weary. Defessa is the one that we've seen. Just use the feminine uh, version of it and you have legio defessa, legionis defessae, legioni defessae, legionem defessam, and legione defessa, right? And there'll be a long mark on the ablative. Again, just matching case number and gender, nothing too crazy there. For happy person, we're using the word homo hominis, right? For person, it's masculine. So we're using litus, right? Think of litus aum. We're just using the masculine form. You'd have homo litus, hominis lighti, homini lito, hominem litum, and homine lito, right? You're just matching case number and gender, all right? The last one for part one is old custom. Now, the word custom, mos moris, is a third declension now, right? So again, you're doing blank is EMA, and we're just using old as antiquus, right, is, is the word for old that we've seen. So you'd have um, masculine, right? They're both masculine, or, or I should say the noun is masculine, and you're matching the end, the adjective to be masculine. So you're going to have mos antiquus, moris antiqui, mori antiquo, morem antiquum, and more antiquo, right? Again, remember, ablative has long marks. So that's all it is. So the, the first part of grammar exercise one is nothing. Nothing too, too difficult. It's just a chance to remember, well, to recognize what declension your noun is. That's the first thing you have to do. Practice your third declension um, noun endings and just matching case number and gender with an adjective. Okay? So part two of grammar exercise one is saying supply the proper case ending. So here we have a fill in the blank exercise. It doesn't tell you to, but I'd always recommend to translate it just so you're getting a little extra practice in. Um, so again, we're thinking um, really third declension um, nouns is really what we're after. So number one, we have pox homin blank est cara, right? So peace is pox. You're saying peace is dear, right? Uh, pox est cara. And remember, dear is going to go with a dative because it's dear to someone, right? Now, in this case, we put ibus um, just because it kind of makes more sense to me, right? Pox hominibus. So this would say peace is dear to men. Um, it would be kind of weird to say peace is dear to the man, although I guess that kind of makes sense. So whatever world you want to live in, you can either make it mass, um, sorry, singular or plural, but it needs to be dative. Remember, kata is one of those special adjectives um, that takes a dative. In this case, I just made it plural, thought it sounded more interesting, but you do whatever you want. As long as you have a dative ending on it, you'll be fine. Okay. And number two, we have I start blank, bellum a milit blank, gerebator. So here, I start is the word for summer, right? And it makes the most sense to be ablative. We've seen that phrasing before where it just means in the summer, I start day, right? Because the main idea here is bellum gerebator, a war was waged or was being waged. You have the imperfect um, gerebator, it's passive. Bellum is your, your subject. It has a U-M because it's neuter, so that's nominative, right? Nominative singular. Um, it wouldn't make sense to say the summer is waging something or summer was waging a war. Um, none of that would make sense. So I state is your answer, right, for in the summer. And then you have uh, the war was waged by blank. Now, again, here you could say the war was waged by a soldier. That would be kind of weird. So pluralize it to make it soldiers and you have militibus, right? It's just an ibus ending, um, which is ablative, right? Ablative plural. Okay, but again, if you wanted to, you could technically say the war was waged by one soldier and you just have some Rambo guy out there waging it. Whatever world you want to live in, right? As long as you have the right case, the number is a little flexible. For number three, you have he aims multitudin blank, non delecta, right? So he aims is um, winter, right? So the winter does not delight, non delecta, right? That's your main phrase here. And then you have the word for uh, crowd, right? Multitude in blank. Now, it makes the most sense here because we already have a subject to say the winter does not delight the, the multitude or the crowd. So it's going to be accusative. Um, singular would be multitudinum, right? So winter doesn't delight the masses, right? People don't like the wintertime. Sure. Okay. For number four, you have clamor blank, victor blank, Errant magni. So something was great is kind of the idea, or some things, plural, were great. It's errant magni. So we're looking for a plural subject. So we have two words. You have 
um, shouts, right? Clamor blank. And you have the word for victor, right? You have victor blank. Um, so here, when you kind of piece it together, the thing that's going to make the most sense is to say the shouts were great. Clamores, right? The shouts of the victor. So clamores victorum um, is how you would say the shouts of the victors were great. That makes more sense than saying the victors were great, right? That doesn't really uh, add up. So once you know that shouts is probably your subject, the only thing that will really make sense for the word victor is to make a genitive plural. The shouts of the victors were great, right? Kind of gives you an image of soldiers shouting because they won a battle. All right, and the last one we have here is number five. So you have milit blank, decimai legion blank, sunt kaisar blank, kari. Okay, so we have something about um, something is dear. And again, when you have that adjective kari, you're looking for a dative. So off the bat, you can kind of see that uh, Caesar, Caesar is probably the dative, right? So something is, or, or some things rather were or are dear to Caesar. So when you do that, you get Caesari, right? Dear to Caesar. But let's step back a little bit, okay? because we have to find out what was dear to Caesar. And so we have two kind of things here. You have um, millet, right? The word for soldier. And then you have something about 10th, decimai. Now this is going to go with um, the word legion because the 10th legion we've kind of seen as we're working through, it's just numbering of the, of the legion there. And decimai would be um, genitive singular in this example. So when you put that together, you can kind of guess the soldiers is your subject, milites, right? So if you have soldiers as your starting, part, uh, starting point, the soldier, Soldiers are dear to Caesar. Already, this sentence is kind of making sense. What you can do with um, uh, decimai legion is make it legionis, right? The 10th legion of the 10th legion because it'll be genitive. And again, the way I know that is you wouldn't say the 10th soldiers are dear. So decimai has to be going with legion. Um, and once you know that, you're not saying the 10th legions are dear, right? Because you'd kind of, it wouldn't make a ton of sense. So you want to make milites your subject, the soldiers of the 10th legion. That's your um, genitive there, gen singular, because it's one 10th legion. Um, that's what you do with decimai legionis. And then the rest of the sentence kind of flows, right? The soldiers of the 10th legion are dear to Caesar. So caesari cari. Okay. So again, this is trying to get you to play around with third declension noun endings. Um, just feel really comfortable with them. Uh, Road to Latin is a couple chapters that breaks third declension nouns into different groups. It's not overly necessary. Um, once you get the idea of third declension, you'll probably be fine. But that's what this grammar exercise is for. Just a chance for you to work your way through, do some practice with the vocab um, that we've seen so far, and a lot of it coming from this particular chapter. So if you're able to make it through both of these sections of grammar exercise one um, without any trouble, and your answers are pretty close to or, or matching mine, then you can probably feel pretty good that you're in a good spot and ready to move on. Again, if you want more practice, I always recommend, uh, recommend Magistrula. I think it's the best for just getting mass repetition of translating Latin. And again, if you go onto my website, you can find um, links already set up for you where you can practice third declension noun. So get as much practice as you can. But again, if you've already done the vocab and the story, you've read through the grammar, you're able to handle this, it's probably a good sign that you're ready to move on. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below, but otherwise just keep practicing it and go Good luck.